Your prison rolling? Throw it. Does red blinking mean it's on? Okay, we're recording now, so. Oh, yeah. Here we are, Bear oh. Mountain. Oh, we're in Main Park right now in Canon, California. Give me this, you gotta get pumped out. Roll for the cow and epic stuff. I'm having so much fun. We're dropping in three, two, one. What's up, Abe Kislevitz here, and we've hit a special milestone on the channel, which is 100,000 subscribers. So thank you to everyone that's tuned in. I thought, what better time than now to go back and look at everything that I've made over the past 12 years and make a little highlight video. So that's what we're doing here. I'm actually walking through the behind the scenes of making a little highlight video in Adobe Premiere. I've got some tips and tricks, some new tools, and we'll look at some old footage. This video is sponsored by Adobe, and I am super thankful for that. What better way to give back to the community than support the creators that are using your product every day? The teaser that you saw at the beginning of this video is just a small taste of what I'm working on as my highlight video from the last 12 years of creating content. Let's quickly run through what we're going to be talking about today. First, we've got making selects with the scene edit detection tool. Then I'll be showing you how to view the subclips visually. We'll rewind a little bit to the actual editing process, so I'll help you with setting up your sequence. Then using markers to edit with intent, you'll find out what that means in a little bit. We'll walk through some of my old footage, and then of course everyone's favorite, export settings. First things first, we're going to open up Adobe Premiere, and I have my project called 100K Highlight. I made a sequence called Selects, and normally if I have raw content, I lay out all of the content that I shot, and then I go through and, and watch pretty much everything and, and clip things up or down based on whether I want to end up using it or not. But this video is going to be entirely made up of past edits. So I have a catalog of all of the videos that I finished and uploaded to my YouTube channel. I'll bring them into this Premiere project. I've got one here just to show you guys, which is uh, USC Ski and Snowboard The Weekend. I'm going to line them all up into the Premiere timelines. I'm going to show you a tool that's going to automatically chop up all of these videos based on the cuts. And normally you'd have to do this manually, or if you're going to use this content, you could bring it up into the program window, scrub through, and then find the moments that you want. But in tons and tons of edits, because I've got over 100 videos on my channel, this would just take a long time and you might miss little cuts and little clips. And so what my goal is, is to find the clips that I want to use and find them quickly. It takes a little bit of setup on our end, but it's really easy to do. I go up to clip, scene edit detection. We're going to automatically detect scene changes. So every time there's a cut and you can only use this tool on finished assets that ha actually do have cuts. So this scene edit detection isn't going to take a raw clip and find the most interesting moments of, say, a 20-minute GoPro clip. What it will do is automatically cut up your video based on the actual cuts that you have. And there's a multitude of reasons why you'd want to use this for things like color correction, where you don't have to actually manually go in and chop up a video. But in my case, I wanted to create this highlight video that contains tons and tons of clips from an already finished assets. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to explain the benefits of this new scene edit detection. Your different options are apply a cut at each detected cut point, create a bin of subclips from each detected cut point. So that's just gonna make a bin over here with every single cut. Or you can also do create clip marker at each detected cut point. So actually, I don't want it to cut this up in the, the timeline because I don't really need those little pieces. What I do need is a bin of clips over here. So I'm going to say create a bin of subclips from each detected cut point and then hit analyze. So you'll see it's pretty quick. It's going to analyze the video. And obviously, if you have 100 different videos, it's going to take a little longer to do all of that. But grab a cup of tea, come back, and it'll be done. Bingo. So you, what you'll notice is since I didn't tell it to chop up my video, it still is remained in here as normal. 
what it has done is made a folder next to my original video, which contains subclips of all of the cuts in the video. So if we double click these, we can see it's just that clip followed by this clip. It uses Adobe Sensei, which is Adobe's smart neural networks to actually understand if the video is at a cut point or not. So it's not just visual based where it's looking at lightness and, and color and stuff like that. It's actually identifying the scenes and it does an amazing job of cutting up the video at the, the correct cut points. What I like to do is since I have this bin now, I can double click this open and pop this out. I can change the view to the icon view. And now this is a visual representation of every clip in this video. So what I'll end up doing is making a new timeline called my highlight edit, and I'll go through each video and pull in just the pieces that I know that I'd like to try and use. So now that I've explained this, let's rewind a little bit and go back into what actually goes into the making of just any highlight video. Go to file, new sequence, and I'm gonna set up a sequence based off of the digital SLR template. So I go to DSLR 1080p30 and then go up to settings and we're going to enter in a couple manual things. So I like to be editing in 4K these days because YouTube does give you higher quality video if you upload in 4K. So we'll go to the frame size and that is 3840 by 2160. Uh, square pixels is great. This is great. I edit everything in 30 FPS or 2997. Um, and then if you want to save this preset, because you're going to be making these over and over again, I love to hit save preset. So I'm going to call this uh, 16 by 9 4K. And that will save into a little custom folder at the bottom. And that is so good to have these. So we'll name this highlight edit. And so now I have my 4K sequence. I'm gonna put it into sequences. So I've got my highlight edit. I've already got my music that I've selected. I get my music from Musicbed, which is an awesome licensed music service. And you can check out more information in the description below. So for this video specifically, I've already gone and, and made a little music cut. So what I like to do when I'm making a highlight video is actually have some kind of structure. What I like to do is add little marker sections in the timeline. So first make sure you are not highlighted on any clip. So just click out and hit M and then hit M one more time. You can name this as intro old GoPro and take the duration and slide it out to whatever. And then you'll, you'll be able to grab the handles. But if you don't do this duration, it's just going to be a marker. So now I have this handy little thing here. So I'm gonna say, okay, so that's kind of where the song changes. So I'm gonna slide this guy here. And then the next part will have kind of modern day USC ski and snowboard team videos. So we'll use white for that. And I'll say USC ski and snowboard. And again, drag out this duration and that'll go up to about here. And so we, if we get this intro of old GoPro and then we kind of transition into higher quality video, that's when I started experimenting in After Effects, we start to get a little bit of a timeline of flow of the channel and how, how people experienced it. Since I'm deciding to make specific sections in this video, it naturally gives the video structure and it gives it kind of a storyline to follow. And so when I'm looking to what clip should I put in here and what clip should I put in there? Rather than just a bag of clips, let me just throw it to music and, and hope that you guys like it. And you're kind of always giving yourself these structures so that it makes it easier on you in the editing process to just give you guidelines of, and this is where these clips go. And if you can't find a zone, then you're going to move on. That is the biggest thing for me in terms of editing highlight videos, and especially with professional videos with GoPro where we make the Hero 3 launch video or the Hero 4 launch video is we have so much content. It's such a daunting task to think, how am I going to put all of these clips in here? Am I going to do it justice? Am I going to do it in the right way? So we start with this structure and this is the exact same thing we do with highlight videos at GoPro and we outline and we'd be very rigid about which sections go in which areas. 
then it's a much easier task to digest what is it that I have to do? What do I have to accomplish today? I have to fill this section. I've gone ahead and finished the different sections. So I have a real moment here in the middle. Then we have GoPro around the world. And then lastly, the section I call GoPro slash Abe new tech. Now we're ready to use the scene edit detection tool on all of our finished assets. So once that's done, I can open up each of the edits folders of clips, pick out just the clips that I think that I wanna use in the edit, drag them into the timeline, and then from there, we'll just figure out where they go. Okay, welcome back. So we have gone through a couple hours in the making and you have obviously already watched the video so you know what happens. Um, and I'll give you a little walkthrough of some of these clips because it's pretty funny. This clip here is actually the first time I ever even turned on a GoPro. This was before GoPros were HD. This is before the Hero 1. This is actually the um, GoPro Hero. And it took two AA batteries. And I think right here I'm trying to figure out if it's filming or not. And then here is after a couple days of using it, I put it on my head and I'm following Chris going off this one of the huge jumps in Mammoth, which is always really fun. And then here's kind of where we realized that we could put it on the end of a ski pole. This was a couple months later in the spring. And that was kind of a new revelation before anybody was doing selfies or anything like that. This is 2008, 2009. We're kind of still in the intro old GoPro, and then we're going to transition into USC ski and snowboard. So this is the first shot where we have the HD GoPro, and this was early on in the season. And then we kind of introduce the idea of USC ski and snowboard team where we start to actually think about filmmaking and we're kind of trying to experiment with new ideas. And then you can kind of see the quality of, of how far we've come from even just a year before that. So let's go to the export panel because we all want to know what the best settings are. So we're going to go to file export media or command M. And if we're going to YouTube for 4K, then we're going to go to H.264 and we're going to export video, export audio. I always like to hit match source just to be safe, but we should just double check that it says 3840 by 2160. And then you're going to come down to this bitrate encoding. And for YouTube videos and high quality videos, I do VBR2 pass. And if it's 4K, I'm not really concerned with space on my side, so I usually overcompensate with higher bitrate just to make sure that I'm doing my part. So for 4K, you could target it at uh, 60 or 70. I usually go 75. That's really it for those of you that are thinking my videos never look as good as your videos. Well, just know that mine looked a lot better to start with, and then once it goes to YouTube, you kind of just have to say la vie and, and let it do its thing. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little bit tutorial, a little podcast, and a little history lesson with my YouTube channel. I'm truly thankful for this community. I've rallied around filmmaking. You guys obviously are very passionate about new technology, software, so I'm excited to keep bringing you new content that is in that vein and hopefully push my own boundaries while teaching you all a little something as well. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe. I've got the full highlight video coming out and a bunch of other stuff that I'm working on. So I will see you soon.